professional game review uh, between two very strong players, Gu Li from China and Chou, uh, who is originally from Taiwan but plays uh, for the Japanese Go Federation, uh, the Nihon Kin. Uh, in this game, I wanted to kind of showcase how powerful codes can be uh, at changing the development and the situation on the board. So professional games are very good to study. I highly recommend them after you get past about uh, 10Q. Uh, not to necessarily go over the whole game, but to just sort of study certain points, try to find the most interesting point and see if you can learn something from it. Because for the most part, uh, there's always something you can learn from a pro game. All right, so uh, let's go over the game. All right, so nowadays you would not see the low Chinese opening uh, as much. It, this was a game from like 2015. So nowadays, because of, you know, with the advent of AlphaGo, uh, AlphaGo believes that playing any Chinese opening is a little bit too slow, it's too over-concentrated. For us humans, it's probably okay. Uh, just to play like this, this is the low Chinese territorial, so white approaches, then black pincers, uh, and then white uh, counter pincer. So of course, uh, there is the option of invading the 3-3 point, but I like this because uh, this is a cool move. This is a move I like to use against uh, Chinese formations. And the idea behind this move, uh, in the game black played this, but what white wants is for black to play this, white will hane. And if white attaches here, white wants black to play like this. Uh, if this, if you've uh, not seen this uh, Joseki, this standard sequence, then there is a lecture on it. Uh, but it's fairly simple. It's a way for white to take the corner. And the point now is that this black influence, this wall here, is not facing in the same direction as white's, uh, uh, black's other stone towards the right side. So it's black has kind of got stones doing two different things. So black kind of, it doesn't meld well together. And so this is what white wants uh, from black. Now you might be thinking what had black hanes, and this is actually gets a little bit complicated, but this is a fun standard sequence. White will tari, extend, tari, extend. You know, th these are just forcing moves, right? So it's pretty easy to figure out what to do with them. Tari, connect, uh, and then white will atari once, and then play here. It threatens the ladder this way. So uh, black's gotta defend. And then white can capture the stone in the corner, but with some Aji. All right. Now, this um, would be a big corner for white. Uh, this is a lot of points and territory. And now from black's perspective, it's sort of like, well, what's the point of my marked stone here? Like, it would be really great from black's perspective if black could take this marked stone off the board and put it over here. Then I would say black stones have got uh, a lot more efficacy. There's a lot, they're doing a lot more on the board than they were before. Like this, it's kind of like, why would you put a stone there in the first place? So it, it could be said that uh, white's territory outmatches what black gets on the outside just a bit. So I don't know if black would want to uh, go for this sequence, which is why uh, in games, black tends not to play this um, move necessarily. Although there are some games with some harder variations. But in the game, Black played this. This is one of my favorite moves in the game of Go. Uh, you can play a move like this where there's a helper stone on the side. Uh, this is a stubborn move. This, by, by playing the 3-3 three, three point, you're basically saying, listen, I'm going to live and I'm going, and your stones are not going to be able to connect. Uh, it will lead, definitely lead to a fight. So here, White will lean. Uh, this leaning attack is to try to put pressure on these two stones. Uh, black will hone once, and then White will play here. And then black comes out. So black is splitting the white group at A from the other white group at B. All right. So this, and this is you can see how this stone here is helping um, black. It gives black's attack some oomph. Uh, it's got, it gives it a little bit more power. But you may be thinking, okay, there's a cutting point on the other side, so it's like you know you don't, you don't get everything. So white cuts. This is sente, and then white will make a little bunker. Uh, on the top of the board. So white's pretty much uh, set there. If we go back a bit, you could defend the cutting point, but then white will jump here. And then I really feel like white is completely erasing anything, any benefit that the Chinese opening had given black. Uh, so I feel like this sort of is like white on a very strategic level undoing what black is doing. So I think that's why uh, Cho elected to come out here. That way it's, it's an active move. It pressures the black stone at B. And 
these three stones right here, even though they're a little, they're, they don't have a base yet, they definitely have a, they're going to have an effect on what happened on the left side of the board. So, I, they're useful stones. Uh, we don't immediately reinforce them though, we have to come back here to make certain that, you know, we, we press down on this stone here, this white stone. Alright, so white plays this. This is important because with black, all this, these stones on the right side of the board, black really wants to get the bottom side of the, uh, this side. Uh, to try to expand so like so for example if white played here uh, Black would love to get this move or this move uh, to try to make all the stones make build a very very deep uh, territorial framework Instead white played here. This is sort of uh, cutting off blacks uh, Advancement and then black played here We play a defensive move here because these three stones again these three stones have a lot of efficacy here They're doing a lot of work so this, we don't want, uh, for example, black to necessarily get the three, three point and push us against this wall. So we play a defensive move. Instead, I mean, you could try something like a pincer. It's just that uh, when black comes out, these three stones are walling off white preemptively. So white play a defensive move. Uh, black play on the side, white attacks. And then this is a big point. I mean, we want to build the right side as much as possible, make a deep framework. And this was a very interesting invasion. Uh, I had not seen this move before uh, in this shape specifically. Uh, normally you might see white invade like this, or you may see white come from the outside. Like for, so for example, to make the outside uh, strong, so white would make the corner strong and the side strong and make this very, and eventually black won't be able to hold on to much territory um, in here once he has to defend, because uh, defending is usually pretty awkward. Uh, so I was a little bit surprised to see this, but it's a very, uh, it's, it's a fighting move, but I like it. Uh, so black didn't just, uh, cut immediately. All right. So black was because the, the corner is where the, um, the action is. We want to make these three stones work. So if we can gut out the base for these white stones, these three stones will do their job. So we play the three, three point. Uh, of course, white is not going to play this. That's terrible. Uh, black, that's just too easy for black and white is too narrow. So white has to cut. And then white's going to play here. Right, in the game white played connected and you connect um, like this in situations where black has some thickness near you. So uh, if white plays this much more aggressive move, then black can cut. And then there is bad Aji at A uh, for black to try and start either swallowing these stones or swallowing these uh, two stones at the top. And these three stones are doing their job. So this uh, allowing this cut would be overplay. So that's why white uh, solidly connected all of his stones with the diagonal move and the iron pillar like this so that he could uh, later not be under attack by black. Okay, and then there's that Aji I was talking about beforehand, but it's not as severe because white is mostly connected. All right, and now here's where things kind of get interesting because now black's got a little bit of a conundrum. So black took the corner, the upper left, but in doing so, he basically seeded a large section of the outside to white. Now, black has got some stones. It's got one group at A, another group at B, another group at C. And he's trying to think to himself, how can I use all these groups, you know, tie them all together and erase as much white territory as possible? And he does it in a very, very clever way. So we start off with this, right? So in, in situations like this, I usually like to take a, a, the, the, a second to um, look at my opponent's shape weaknesses. Like where where can I break up his shape? Where does he have uh, weak points where I can peep to make shape? Where does he have low liberties? Things like that. So for example, white has a weakness at A. So that means if you peep at around here somewhere, white will have to uh, connect. Also here could possibly uh, be another uh, peep that you could use as a forcing move. This peep is uh, probably not worth as much, but it's there. And then of course, uh, splitting this two space jump has a weakness here, uh, which we can start splitting its stones apart. And the last weakness that white has is what happens when black plays at A, this will be sente because white cannot allow black to uh, connect under, but this might help black um, get some extra moves on the outside like this or like this, things like that. Now, I'm not saying he's going to play that right away. I'm just saying when you look at shapes like this, you have to sort of think to yourself, well, 
you know, what uh, moves do I have available that are sente? Because when things start to get dice, I need to be able to make shape for myself. So I'm sure Black has all these se these um, possible sequences in mind when he, when he starts fighting. Okay, so we start a fight. And White cuts. It's too, um, it, it's too submissive to just play like this. Uh, especially when there's so many more white stones in the area. Okay, and then white, and then as we can see, we got the peep, uh, where black is now, uh, start, basically black is starting, um, some chaos, and he's aiming at this cut at A, uh, to basic to sort of put white in a squeeze, um, if he can get enough stones in the area. Now, these black stones may mostly die, but if black can keep white to a certain line, his right side should be able to hold out and give enough territory by the end. All right, so white played here, uh, and then black uh, started this very, very interesting fight. So let's take a look at what could have happened. Okay, so first off, if we directly answer the peep like this, black can extend. This is a threatening a ladder, because there's a la the ladder here. If we ladder the stone, it'd be terrible for white. And then we can start squeezing. And this is pretty, let me see how this looks. Yeah, if we continue on with this, this is pretty, oops, not that one, this. Oh, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Uh, so that's not possible, all right? So that's, that's not a thing we can do. So this move is actually, this stone right here, the fact that it uh, was sent against this side, not sent necessarily, but exposed the weakness here, allowed this sequence to happen. So that sequence is impossible from white's perspective. Uh, if black plays here, um, if black connects, uh, again, you see how that move, you see how this move came up? Was, I was going through the list of moves that were possible in the area due to the shape, and this one popped up. And then we have this. And in this case, what Black basically has done is gouged out all the territory on the side. White's a lot stronger on the outside, but like, there's nothing behind him necessarily to take points. Uh, White could also try to, uh, a little more active. So basically say, yeah, go ahead and cut there, I'll capture you. In which case, then we have this move. And as you can see, we have the same problem again, is that black can play this very, very good move. And then once black plays here, it's it's pretty much gone. So like, you, uh, just to demonstrate for people, um, see, it doesn't work. So this is all the bad, so that's all the bad option that uh, black was aiming for, is the combination, is using this move, the combination of this move and this move are the things that white has to look out for. Uh, in this area. So that's why in the game, white played here. Okay, black uh, Hanes, white Ataris, black extends. And as you can see, white was able to come out unscathed, but black was able to make a very, very, a pretty decently thick shape. And there's still a problem. There's, there's still might be a problem here at some point. I mean, white can escape uh, at the top with these stones should they be cut, but that's not a nice thing to have happen. Uh, if we go back, if black Atari's like this, that's sending, it's threatening the snapback. This this probably will be actually very good. Um, it, it would be a very good strategy because this is not a whole lot of points. Let's count it. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Like 20 points for the captured stones. Uh, but look at how this stone is really because we want to swallow this stone to where we don't have to spend a lot of extra moves killing it so the deeper this gets the more difficult this stone becomes like it's, it, it basically dies and so this will be actually very very good for black uh continuing with this moyo strategy i think black wanted to do a little more fighting though and so you know it's the only thing is that th these stones um, while they have a pretty good shape, they're not entirely alive, but mostly alive. And when white gets this, uh, you can see that the border, the connection along this line between the stones gets disrupted. So that's why it was uh, thought that the black shape was a little bit too heavy 
uh, to work well with his other stones on the board. Black jumps and white reinforces the corner. And then this is another really interesting uh, way to tackle black shape. This looks very AlphaGo-esque. Because uh, AlphaGo, like when you have a formation, AlphaGo will uh, attach and then start double hunting and then all sorts of fun things happen. So let's see what happens in the game. Okay, this is this is pretty aggressive. Uh, this is basically saying I'm going to take away, you're going to have no ice space, you're going to have to attach and fight. And then white plays here. And then um, black basically corrals white into the corner while taking the outside, which is probably a good idea. Uh, if we go back here. If white had tried something more conventional, which is like uh, just approaching the corner like this, right? Um, black, this is very comfortable for black. So black just to, makes points um, with little to no bad Aji and white is left with a floating group. So this is, uh, the, the conventional way doesn't really work that well. Uh, maybe for it, maybe it will lead to a close game, but I, as white, I feel like um, I didn't gain that much while black is making the vital territory in the area I want to destroy it. So that's why white played like this uh, to start a fight. So here, if white attaches, uh, white can fight like this, um, and this is sort of you know this is well this is prime example of Sabaki. So white can fight like this and try to um, make a life in the corner and also try to expose weaknesses in black shape as best as possible. Uh, white played here instead, which is fine. This is a way of, basically what white is looking for here is white gets to settle down uh, and then white is really aiming at the weakness of these two stones. So there's two square mark stones where large knights move. And that's where if white is going to come out with the stone at A, if white's going to make this live and gut all of black's territory here, it's going to be by using the weakness of this, of this shape. So let's see what, how it happens. Okay, so black plays this to sort of limit white. Uh, then th the reason for it is that um, this now, this move, uh, becomes very powerful because um, white will have to come back at S1 or else white will be have a, like a weak group. So, but white starts off by um, attacking on the right side. White defends his group. And then black attacks uh, this group, this little uh, bunkered group. Okay, and then we cut, and then we're gonna to try to force uh, the, two, the two groups to uh, connect with each other. And by doing so, but this cut, th this move right here does connect. It's just, it's kind of sad. It doesn't make that much shape. How uh, many points, excuse me. So it's just like, you just connect and that's it. And then uh, Black's going to, Black played this for, so that later Black can play that in Sente. Um, if we look back at this, the, the idea is that later Black wants to probably play this. Um, if black if black plays at the bottom to expand uh, his own area and make white's area smaller, the problem is that there's this sort of um, white can make life on the side. Like I think even if um, let's see, yeah, because even if you could just make a co or something, and that'd be kind of bad for black's perspective because he spent all these stones on this side of the board and then he got no territory out of it. So black had to come back and make certain that this gets secure territory. Uh, and then in which case white's gonna get the big point here since black didn't take it. And then black invaded the three three point. Uh, if black just answers, then white, the bigger, the thicker the outside is, the more stones there are, the more likely that this is going to die. Um, because if you're, uh, when, Black and base the three three point. If white is very strong towards the outside, white can play some pretty aggressive moves uh, to try to make this die uh, to gut out all the um, eye space. Uh, whereas if the outside is thinner, it doesn't work. So um, black said, "Okay, well now is the time for me to invade the three three point. I don't have time to answer uh, his attachment move." So play here. Yeah, see, it's things like this, yeah? So, like, when you're strong on the outside, you can play moves like this to try to uh, gouge out your opponent's eye space if you're not worried about what happens on the outside. Okay, we got the um, sente moves, and then white uh, cut black. Okay, if white just connects... Okay, and then like this. So, um, just... 
if white takes it and clearly black can live on the side. So we can trade the corner for the side territory. And it's super, it's kind of interesting because um, this, you know, white really needs territory. Because if you look at the board right now, if you look at the board back to where we were starting fighting, black's got some points here. But black has a lot of points on the right side. Like this is a this is a pretty good hole and a solid corner. Whereas white doesn't have them has a few points here and a few points here. But white's really banking on the left side, uh, bringing home the cash. So it's he's really got to make certain that black suffers here. So that's why um, just connecting here and trading the corner for the side doesn't necessarily work as well. So um, white's got to play aggressively. And then white uh, cut black, uh, cut the two black groups. Uh, if white plays here and continues to march out, then black will connect. And then we've got sort of this weird uh, instance where black could play, uh, it's like Miai of A and B. Um, that way white will get the corner, but then black can save some of his stones on the side because he's out. And I don't see a way necessarily to uh, corral him in because this black stone is, is sort of threatening these two stones. So that's why in the game, white made certain like, no, I'm going to get these points. Like these stones are dead. Uh, black played here and then black gouged out some over the corner. Okay, this is an interesting move. Uh, if black played like this, then white can play like this and cover everything. And this would be horrible from black's perspective because he would have like, his stones got him nothing in the end. So he's got to, if white, kills off these stones the other group has to um make something can't just die okay so we played here and this kind of leaves a little a little bit of object that uh, black can play the, on the nose that black can start making a center uh these stones die but at the very least um some of the other stones on the side get to live so he got was able to gouge out some of the territory Okay, and so the, again, you see this, how this move comes up. Now it's affecting this white group. And white was able to defend. Uh, if white this ignores it, and black decides to kill, in which case black would, get, would trade this corner for this corner and get this move. But this move also really works well with um, this stone and these stones if black can get a move here. Uh, white could also cut, and if black plays like this, then is it, white gets his uh, corner, but then black was able to take the other side. So it looks like uh, you know neither players can get like both. So basically, what you could you can white can counterattack, but black can still horse trade. Basically saying, listen, I will get one of these corners for myself. Uh, white just defends the corner right now because there's no reason to do that. It would better just take the corner directly. Uh, and then black has to defend and then white has to jump because remember if white plays something big uh, I don't know something territorially big um, something like this I don't know like there's some sort of some move wherever else and black can start playing like this and you can see how black center is getting big so this is an urgent move okay and then black has to run out with this group and as you can see, it's uh, the dust is settled, so now we have to fi figure out who is ahead. Um, and it's a little bit difficult to count, but there's just so many places where White does not have that much territory. Like he's got the the biggest chunk is here, right? So he's captured seven stones, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 points, uh, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 30. We're gonna say he's gonna get. We're gonna say he's gonna get at least this move right. 30, 40, 40 47 for Comey. So let's play. It's like I estimate somewhere around fifty-five points, somewhere in there. Um, Blacks is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, and twenty-two. Twenty-two points. Twenty-five. Let's just say like twenty-seven points on the right side. Maybe 30 with a little bit extra from the center. 30 would just make it a nice round number. Uh, this will be about six points, 36. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 46, 50. So it looks fairly close. 
actually. Um, it, it kind of depends on the how much black can make in this area, how much black can make in this. This area is probably going to be next to nothing because white's got stones this way and stones this way. So black's main point of contention will be how much she can make from here and whether or not these come under severe attack. Um, but they start playing the end game. And uh, black's able to take the corner. As you can see, um, Black just wanted to make certain that he was able to stop White from making territory and White stopping him from making territory. Uh, and we played here up to here, and this is where I wanted to stop. I didn't want to get too much into the end game. Uh, what I mainly wanted to focus on was the opening moves, uh, where Black played this move, which is great. A uh, move you can play if you have a stone on the side. Um, and then you can jump out like this to separate both uh, groups from each other, and now you can see how the stone works. And another thing I wanted to sh kind of show was um, this fight here. So at this point, how we're looking at all of the moves that could be possibly good or bad Aji um, for our opponent. So all these moves that we have in our you know mind as we look at the shape, we don't necessarily necessarily have to play all of them, but they're all moves that we can try to uh, look at and try to meld together into some sort of strategy. Um, basically it's like tools in our toolkit. So when we start the fight here, then we start playing things like this, and now we're sort of aiming at our opponent's weakness and if they make one mistake, well, they get their uh, stones captured. Uh, please go over this game on a real board if you can. Uh, it's really great um, for getting the flow of fighting. Um, also, just kind of appreciating uh, how Black used White's Achi on the left, which was really a masterpiece. I really, truly enjoyed it. Well, I hope you learned something today, and I'll catch you guys next time.